have everybody here. Welcome to the City Planning Committee meeting for uh, the 28th of June. Uh, I'd like to, to acknowledge that we're meeting on the land uh, for which the Muanina people have been custodians for many years and um, acknowledge the determination and re resilience of the Palawa people of Tasmania who have survived invasion and dispossession and who continue to maintain their identity, culture and rights. I'd also like to recognise the value of continuing Aboriginal knowledge and cultural practice and pay my respects to Elders uh, past, present and emerging. Uh, I advise all present that audio and video of this meeting is being recorded and live streamed to the community via the City of Hobart YouTube channel and uh, remind elected members uh, if they have not yet signed in to, to do so in accordance with our COVID-19 safe plan. And please do so now. And could all mobile devices be either turned off or put silent? Now we have uh, everybody present. We have Alderman Briscoe, Councillor Harvey, Alderman Barakas, Councillor Dutter and Councillor Coates. And um, so we don't have anybody to co-opt, nobody um, else uh, on Zoom. Item two is confirmation of minutes. Thank you, Councillor Dutta. Those in favour? Aye. Those against? Item is carried. Um, I think there was a, a minor typo altered for those minutes, um, Dave. Yep, thank you. That was just in relation to one of the reports. Uh, item four, indications of pecuniary and conflicts of interest. No conflicts. Item five is transfer of agenda items. Nope. Item six, plan planning authority items, consideration of items with deputations. Alderman Barakas, thank you. Those in favour? Those against? Items carried. Uh, so we go to... Uh, Item seven, committee acting as a planning authority, and we go to 7.2.1, 79 Collins Street, Hobart, partial demolition, new building, visitor accommodation and hotel industry. And we have the applicant, Monica Cameron and Emma, Emma Riley. Uh, would you like to come to the table, please? And Lucy Burke-Smith. Uh, and we have Daniel Young on Zoom. Thank you, if you'd like to come to the table. Daniel, would you want to um, just uh, put your video on, please? Thank you. Nice. Welcome. All right, over to you. You have five minutes to address the committee. Thanks. Well, we have a short presentation, if the presentation Thank slides you. could be brought up. Thank you, Chair um, and Committee. My name is Lucy Burke-Smith. I'm an associate with the Purcell Architects and the Heritage Consultant for this project. Uh, and if we could go back to slide one, please. Thank you. So, fundamental to conservation is an understanding of significance. Oh, thanks very much, Joy. Um, the Hobart City Council listing data sheet for 79 to 81 Collins Street sites that the place is listed for its community and associational values and for its archaeological research potential. As heritage consultants for the project Purcell together with Austral Tasmania undertook a further detailed assessment of significance with a conservation management strategy provided to council as part of the application documents. The assessment found the, uh, the place to be significant um, against an additional criteria being criteria eight, A, sorry. Against this criteria, it is the archaeological potential of the place that is considered significant. The fabric does not, in our opinion, meet the thresholds for inclusion against this criteria as it does not have direct associations with an event of historical significance, nor demonstrate an important historical period or phase. Importantly, neither the Hobart City Council data sheet nor the assessment undertaken by Purcell and Austral found the place to meet the remaining criteria more typically associated with built fabric. The historic development of the site, namely its recurrent change, means that the built fabric retains little integrity and ability to represent the earlier free classical style. 
The inter interwar Art Deco facade has also been constrained by the retention of the earlier facade and it is not considered a good example of this style, nor a seminal work of the architect A.L. Cripps. An assessment of significance forms the basis of understanding the place, and it should also be accepted as the basis for determination against the Historic Heritage Code. The relevant stated objectives of the Historic Heritage Code are on screen, and I draw your attention to the text that is underlined. This being the case, the grounds for determination of the application should consider the impact to the values specific to this place, being the historic community and associational values and the archaeological research potential. The Cultural Heritage Office's response notes that conditions can be applied to ensure the archaeological values of the site, addressing criteria A and C. And it is our position that there is no argument that demonstrates impact to significance defined by criteria F and G, nor other criteria more directly applicable to built heritage, which has been the basis of the focused assessment. <coughs> The proponent and project team have engaged in a detailed iterative design process which seeks to respond to the characteristics of the place um, and to retain fabric and features which are of architectural interest. The photo montages and views analysis demonstrate that the height, form and massing are contextual to the place and the design is considered, is a considered architectural response to the place and in our opinion an appropriate precedent for development of this nature. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else want to speak? No? And we, does um, Daniel? We're not at this stage. Okay. All right. Thank you. Uh, so I'll open it to the committee for questions. Any questions? Alderman Briscoe. Uh, thank you for that. Um, just uh, the archaeological significance, I note in the report, uh, it's mod uh, there's a section of it that's got moderate importance. That may or may not have any remains of that very early uh, inhabitation of uh, on a convict. Uh, so, um, um, so to me, it's a comment more than a question, really. Um, so, when you do the, if you get approval, um, uh, you'll have an archaeologist on site there during any excavation, and, and uh, work will stop and until it's completely assessed. And. The answer to that would be yes, in that there are established processes for unanticipated finds, um, and as has been appropriately identified by the Heritage Officer in the assessment, these things can be conditioned and managed through recognised processes. Thank you. <coughs> Councillor Harvey. So you're saying from a fabric of the, the building perspective there's nothing there, and you don't even like the facade either. Um, so ideally you'd prefer a clean site rather than a, have to deal with the facade? Um, I was going to take us back to an earlier slide in the presentation, but no, in, in short, no, we're, we're not saying that there isn't anything there, but there are considerations of integrity that you take into account when you're looking at the threshold for inclusions against various different criteria. Well, tell me what you think's worth keeping. I note that there's a, a sandstone basement, for example. So there, there are elements that um, we consider to have um, I guess architectural interest um, or that, like what? Uh, that could be reasonably retained within the proposal such as um, some of the footings in, in the basement including the sandstone that you mentioned. That there could are, be or should be? Well we're, we are proposing that it is. Uh, so other features such as the cargo doors, elements of joinery um, and the, the facade are proposed for retention within the proposal. Because mm -hmm. I always get confused when people say partial demolition when they mean nearly all of it demolish, demolished. <coughs> I think that's just the wording we have to use in the report. But but I, think, I think it's important again to consider mass, uh, matters of integrity and so we're, we're recognising that there is um, a level of, of balance needed for an intervention <coughs> that is appropriate. You mean structural integrity rather than integrity if we like it. What do you mean by integrity? No, I'm talking about the integrity of the, the ability of the fabric to represent values and be read legibly to do so. And, and as such, we um, felt quite strongly that elements of the ground floor and basement could readily be retained because they had the capacity and ability to um, communicate parts of the evolution of the site. But only could be, so you don't know. Uh, will, will they do in that they represent fabric 
which has been part of the iterative process and, and change to the place. Yeah, so just to clarify that those elements are proposed to be retained under this proposal. But the point I'm making is I really loathe for the facadism of, of some architecture. Look at Maya, and it's a, it's a layer of bricks, basically. I, you know, the I Sultan development that. in Collins Street is just a layer of bricks. Um, and, and this is something that the, that the design and project team talked about at length through the iteration. One of the challenges presented by this place is that the first several metres at ground floor have been removed by the 1950s period. And so there's already an element and perception of facadism when you enter into the ground floor of the building in that it doesn't represent um, it within the shop front itself that level of integrity uh, and, and is, is at risk of almost reading as a facadism element itself. So we, in, our, in our previous communications with uh, Hobart City Council in our pre-lodgement sessions, we did discuss at length the appropriate design response to mitigate that impact. Um, and through various different design iterations, I feel that we're at that point. Is there any um, any capacity or any thought to to tell the story of the like the history of the building uh, in relation to to this? But with regard to a program of interpretation, for yeah. example, I'm sure that that would be something that we could look into. The it hasn't been incorporated into the proposal as such because. The element of the proposal, um, I suppose that goes to the broader civic amenities test, was taken to be a contribution, so a $200,000 contribution towards public art um, on, on that council committee on another site. Well, it, we, we did, in earlier iterations, consider potential um, integration of um, art-based interpretation on the building. And in um, discussions with uh, councils, um, officer, you know, public art officers, and that um, it was felt that it was too, it, it was um, not able, given I suppose the relative um, narrow component of the site that was publicly accessible, um, to deliver that in a way that was meaningful um, in terms of meeting the civic amenities test. So yeah, there's the challenge, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah, because I think you know, quite often we we lose that that opportunity to tell stories of of the history of of some of these buildings that are changing significantly. And, and a pro oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. a program of interpretation would actually be best placed to communicate some of those values for which the site is recognised. So some of those more intangible values. Just for your benefit, uh, Chair, we could impose that as a condition of approval if that was the the view of. Um, of of committee and council. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Harvey, you had an, another question? Yeah, look, just point one um, on the reason for refusal. Um, it hasn't, has not been reasonably demonstrated that there are environmental, social and economic or safety reasons of greater value to the community than the historical cultural heritage values of the place. So can you paint me a picture of why we should approve this as, as an offset to the environmental and social benefits that you could create for the city? What environmental benefits would you consider here? You know, so I think importantly that relates to demolition and so it, what we're putting forward to the committee is that it needs to be demonstrated that the fabric represents the values significant to the place and it's our position that the fabric doesn't do that, um, partly because it's not directly attributed to some uh, phases of uh, some events or phases, but equally because of the change that's occurred to the fabric and its lack of integrity in that But regard. the environmental benefit I'm talking about, like if, if, th if this was an outstanding building that demonstrated a high level of environmental commitment and social commitment or whatever, then wouldn't that, that is that what we're talking about here when it comes to offsetting well, the building okay. against environmental values to get uh, that extra? Our argument is that we don't need to get to that point because what's the, what is proposed to be demolished are not elements which contribute to historic cultural heritage. No, no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the building and how it responds to environment and how it responds to social values within Hobart. So you're looking for extra height within the building as well, not just the historical stuff. But I'm, am I interpreting this wrong, that you can offset a building against its 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 level of environmental and social uh, addition to the city. 
Is this yeah. just a trade-off that could be achieved? Yeah, but I, I mean, I, I think the um, provision uh, stipulates that you've, you've got to be able to demonstrate to some degree um, those aspects in the development. That it's got a positive environmental or social contribution to the city. No, I don't think that... The, the Am I interpreting that wrong? I, I don't know whether they... Um, specific uh, suggest that bill but I'll look if you just bear with me I'll, I'll just page um, 44 I think is where you're referring to because I don't understand now what it means to to um, uh, it doesn't demonstrate that there are environmental social economic or safety reasons of greater value to That's the community only regards to the heritage. than the historical heritage code so it might be a, a question that we we ask um, Ms Baines, is that mm. right? Yeah, <laughs> Who, who's here um, to talk to the heritage, to these conditions. But beyond the heritage is what I'm talking about. If you build a fantastic building that really thoroughly deserves to be on this site, then that more than compensates for the loss of any heritage fabric. Yeah, yeah. so it's um, clause A says that there are environmental, well, in relation to the demolition, there are environmental, social, economic or safety reasons of greater value to the community than the historic cultural heritage values of the place. And that hasn't been demonstrated? Well, in the officer's view, it hasn't. But what the applicant is saying is that those uh, elements that are to be demolished have not got uh, significant historical c cultural heritage values. Yeah, I know, but my point is that if this was a sensational, environmentally friendly building, then you'd say, well, there's your offset. You know, we'll give you the concession if you can have it. And, uh, well, and the officers have clearly indicated that there are values that are lost. Mm. Uh, and that those, you, you're right, those environmental or, or social or economic um, uh, benefits from the uh, proposal have not been demonstrated to offset those cultural values that the officers believe exist. Uh, this is more like debate now. Uh, yeah, I, I take your point. Uh, did you have anything you wanted to ask, Alderman Briscoe? No, no, I've asked my question. Thank you. Okay, all right, thank you. If there are no further questions, I'll ask you to take your seats behind. Thank you. No other representative. No, there aren't. I'm just waiting for them to sit down. Yeah, right. I've got a question of the director. Yeah, Alderman Briscoe. Yeah, um, if uh, in a um, if uh, in a transition of a city from uh, retail consumer goods, which uh, Coogan's uh, represented a significant consumer type goods, um, they've moved out to Cambridge or somewhere. Um, those sorts of businesses. Would you say, um, and we're transitioning to accommodation type businesses in the city, such as hotels, um, um, would you say that has significant economic and social um, advantages? That, that um, if we uh, continue the use there of uh, retail, uh, of the type that's been there for a while, 70 odd years, maybe even more, to uh, more of a transition to accommodation businesses, isn't that a and, and, and um, corresponding um, employment and economic activity in building it, would that, um, would that be factors to consider when we uh, remove some heritage elements of the building? Well, well look, I, I, I wouldn't deny that there is some economic uh, benefit from that um, use on, on the site. Yeah. Um, whether it outweighs the values heritage, cultural heritage values that would be lost. I mean, I think that that's the, that's the uh, debate and um, well, Ms Baines will be able to articulate what those values are. Mm. Yeah, because I'm finding Come it to hard. to the table. Right. Yeah. Thank you. Do you, have, do you want to ask Ms Baines any questions or? Um, yeah. I'm finding it hard, whilst the history of the site is really interesting and from the camp right up to a department store like Coogan's and Fitzgerald, whatever, um, I'm still finding it really hard to say where is the value of the community. It's, it's not as if it's Davies Street or Macquarie Street where there's significant intact heritage buildings that have stayed there for 100 years maybe. Um, this one is an involving 
mid-city, uh, right in the city, uh, mid-city um, environment that has changed every 30 or 40 years, and there are elements of a whole heap of things there. But overall, doesn't to me, doesn't read heritage, except for the, probably the facade from the 30s or, or the 50s. Yeah, OK. Um, thank you for the opportunity to talk. Um, so through you, Chair, um, I think it, certainly this is a really unusual one. We don't have many department stores that are listed places, but that's what it is. So, it, so it is an unusual circumstance. Um, so the thing, I guess, to, to understand about that is Coogan's, the, you know, the company was a Tasmanian furniture making company and the, the company was at its largest in the 1920s. So we're talking about relatively recent cultural heritage. So maybe it's not so familiar because it's not typical of the things that we deal with. Um, but my view certainly is that you have a building with big clear areas that was used for um, displaying and selling furniture. Um, and you've had, you have the cargo door to get things in and out. You have the stairwell for the people to move up and down. You have the pressed tin ceilings. So um, whilst it might not be the grandest thing in the world, it, is, it, is, it does demonstrate its use as a department store and that is the reason which it is listed. Um, so it, it's, it's slightly unusual, but I, I think it's quite clear that, it, that what's in the building um, demonstrates of what it was, so, yeah. Just thinking of the Bag Arcade, which is a very interesting uh, book has come out this year where it, there was a furniture manufacturer there and uh, over the years it's evolved into a whole heap of little stores and the history is still there somewhere, but you wouldn't, it wouldn't read. Uh, to me, Coogan's hasn't got that. It's, to me, it's just another store uh, that, that uh, outlived its economic use there. It would never be a department store again. Um, so, and, and to me, no department store is going to move into there or no retail is going to move into there. So it may have outlived its usefulness, even if it's got interesting history, which is well documented in the report. So, but anyway, it's, uh, it's a matter of um, debate and, and I respect your point of view and, and understand it. I might not agree with it. Councillor Dutta, um, um, do you have a question? Of thank you. Uh, thank you, Chair. Just uh, to follow up from that, the... Uh, just need some clarification with regards to the 19th and 20th century fabric. Um, how, how significant is this, you know, this fabric that's going to be, we're talking about demolition? Okay, so <coughs> in the table, in table 13.1, it's listed as being, um, you know, the, the Coogan's department store, and so that's unique. Um, we, we can take views about how... Um, how valuable that is, but there isn't another Coogan's department store, so it's very significant because it's the only example. Um, yeah, I do realise it's, it's a very quirky one, but you know we only have one of these. It's not like a Federation House where we have them all over the city, and if we lose this one, we'll we'll have many others. Um, this is the only Coogan's department store, so if it's gone, it's gone. Uh, and do you do you feel that there are ways that um, the the proponent could have um, incorporated a lot of those features into a design of this magnitude? Um, well, I think, I think pragmatically, you know, if you're going to build a hotel which has a certain floor plate, you know, you, you can't do that within a really small um, footprint. But certainly I can, you know, I don't want to um, do, you know, design things, but... Um, you can talk about other precedents in other cities. So the Hilton in Melbourne, there's a, a new hotel and what they've done is retained the first few floors, not just the facade, but the first few floors and the, and the building behind. So it's like a shoebox and then the tower comes up behind that. So what they've done is kept the lower portion and then built the tower behind that. And I'm not saying that that's possible in this instance, but there's certainly examples of people not just retaining the facade, but keeping the whole whole first few floors and putting things like the lobby and the restaurant within the existing heritage fabric, you know, within the whole building, the volume of the building, not just the facade and, and doing a tail behind. Um, and that would um, be set back further than, than this, this yes, current Yes, so it would, um, that sort of um, re design response, I guess it takes the bulk of the tower element away from the heritage fabric. So the proximity is greater and therefore the impact is less. 
Are there any further questions, Ms. Baines? Because we do have Choi with um, the three D modelling. If you'd like to see that, if you can stay there, Ms. Baines, and we might come back for further questions. Choi, over to you. Thanks. <coughs> Which way we go? Uh, uh, in Collins yeah, Street, Street, outside the old A and P building, or the moving towards Elizabeth Street Junction, and uh, that's the building there, the taller one. Go against the traffic, Joy. Yeah, yep. Uh, traffic. Well, the report does show that you probably wouldn't notice it as a, a, a pedestrian. You'd have to look for another point and looking right up from the other side of the road. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. Excuse me. <coughs> so, Director, it doesn't meet that setback requirement <coughs> either. That's the first setback set. Uh, no, there are, there are a couple of. Um, uh, issue, sorry, there's the building envelope um, and it doesn't uh, uh, necessarily satisfy the amenity building envelope but it does satisfy the performance criteria around um, building height uh, but its uh, relationship with um, uh, heritage, adjacent heritage buildings and um, its relationship with the exist on the existing heritage site is problematic. Uh, from a heritage point of view. I think uh, um, the officers are of the view that it, um, in terms of the wider townscape, it sits pretty well um, uh, and I think consistent with uh, the Woolley analysis of um, building within the um, uh, in, in, this in this location uh, can accommodate that height from a general townscape perspective. I can accommodate Woolley yeah. yeah. said uh, that could be a place for 60 uh, metres, couldn't it? Yeah, yeah. In today's scheme, would the Trafalgar car park across the road have been approved? Um, yeah, uh, could it? Yeah, um, I believe so, in today's scheme. Because, again, I think that's got the setback as well. Can we have a look at the shadow diagrams, please? Particularly over that, that uh, Collins Street. Just sorry, in relation to the Trafalgar one, there may well be heritage implications um, as well that I haven't factored into that response. But um, Where's the building? The yellow, the yellow is one. Sh right, shadowing. Thanks. Where does the existing sh uh, overshadowing? Does so it add additional overshadowing? There's been a fairly detailed analysis within the report. There is a little bit of additional uh, overshadowing at the entrance of Collins Court, but um, it's the officer's view that it's not material enough to warrant a refusal on that mm. basis. Chair, I'm going to have one more go at this environmental thing, and then I'll leave it. Far away. So, the trade-off... That's the, the Collins Court, is it? Sorry, Councillor Harvey. Yes. That's Collins Court there, that's the overshadowing. Collins, yeah, that's Collins Court there, and then you've got existing overshadowing occurring there already with the red. So, there's a little bit of area... Well, yeah, well done, Choi. It's not overshadowed. It will be overshadowed between 11 and 12... Uh, on the shortest day. So, yeah, Thank so, you. Um, sorry, Bill. So, sorry. from a performance perspective, 
If a building performs exceptionally when it comes to environmental performance, like it's a gazillion star building, you know, it's got all the whiz, you know, the, the, the bells and whistles and, it, and it's, a, it's a really landmark sort of a thing, you know, cross laminated timber building and it's, a, it's got that wow factor, then would this get across the line from that environmental trade-off perspective? Well, I think... Uh, or am I, off, am I totally off the mark here and it's irrelevant? Well, no, no, no. I think um, it may not uh, necessarily get it over the line just on that, uh, on that one factor alone. I think it would have to uh, demonstrate um, a, uh, a significant uh, contribution. Now, what that is may not necessarily be about the materials or its performance, energy rating. It mm. might, might be other factors. A green roof or mm -hmm. various various other uh, option uh, various other elements that might um, and you know significant economic now um, you know you would argue that there are a significant number of hotels recently constructed mm -hmm. is another one going to be a significant economic driver maybe not uh, but if it was um, you know the center for uh, if Apple or uh, uh, Microsoft were uh, proposing to locate their head office in Hobart, Which for example. They know. You, you, there might well be a, a, a wider economic uh, um, advantage. Go to Kingborough. <laughs> <laughs> with, with such a um, uh, very low factor. So in the building code, the building, uh, buildings these days, there's a lot of environmental things built in. So everything will be double glazed. And I'm sure there's a whole heap of environmental things that we don't consider in painting, but we can't bring that forward, can we? And uh, th no. th th that's, that's correct. I think the um, cons uh, construction, Australian Construction Code is, um, um, has, far, uh, adva uh, has far improved over uh, previous years where the energy rating requirements yeah, insulation uh, and, all sorts and all of those sorts of things are uh, much more advanced. Ottoman Barakas? Just, just following off Alan Briscoe's point just then, if the wording, if you've got you know, environmental, social, economic when we talk about it in relation to the heritage and the, 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 the trade-off there, mm. does the inclusion of the word environmental allow us to consider stuff that might be outside the strict planning considerations if, if, if we talk about the trade-off between the heritage value and the environmental impact? Yeah, like if, if there's things that might be as just came out more out then, this might be more of a building code matter, but we're looking at it versus the, the, heri the environmental impacts versus the heritage impacts. If the, the, these environmental concerns are, are one's best place for the building code, but they're relevant in the discussion between the trade-off between heritage and environmental, would that clause make them then make that relevant? Well, it does. I think because um, the building code um, requires a certain standard. Now, if you minimum. were to yeah minimum standard, if you were to well and truly exceed that and have some e exemplar. Um, building, then uh, that would be, a, a, you know, could be a factor. Would, but, would but, if, but even then, are we, are we comparing it against you know, how much does it exceed the minimum of today's environmental requirements, or are we comparing it to how much does it exceed what's currently there? Because even well, if, even potentially the minimum standards right now could well exceed what's currently in place. Oh yes, that's, well, that's, that's yeah. you know that that's that's a potential yeah. as well. Yeah, look, there's no doubt that uh, what will go in will be, uh, uh, you know, far more uh, improved on what the energy rating of the building is currently. Mm. That would be my assessment. But I think it, that that standard is looking a little bit more uh, than that. Um, and, uh, yeah, so... But again, it comes back to, you know, what value you put on those elements that are to be demolished or removed. Um, so clearly the officers are of the view that there are s significant elements of value. Um, you've he heard an alternative view from the, the proponent. Yeah. So the, the, um, whilst um, our officer did uh, indicate it was the Kogan, uh, Coogan's building, um, one, one um, very ordinary <laughs> staircase is being demolished but one is being kept. Um, the facade is being kept essentially, the facade from the 50s. Um, in my, even my lifetime, I've seen um, Tasmanian department stores come and go. Uh, before my time, there were Marshes, Brownells, uh, obviously Fitzgerald's um, has gone, come and gone. 
Coogan's is the la- probably the last one to come and, uh, you know, uh, was in the city, is now longer in the city. It will no longer come back if there is a, there is a firm called Coogan somewhere. Um, I don't think that's a strong argument to me. A city always changes, and it's obviously changing its use. Um, I'm fairly sure that it would be um, a, a, a officer's um, recommend, uh, suggestion for a, a, a set of approval. Um, so I'd like to move that as the motion for approval. Um, in, in my view, this, uh, I, I respect what the officers, heritage officers have said, but to my view, is it, what we're getting is, is in the right place, in the middle of the city, it's not on those heritage, great heritage roads of Davy Macquarie Street. Um, it, it is where the, uh, Mr. Woolley suggested that you could have a 60 metre, at least a 60 metre high or more um, building, um, and it fits in in the great uh, streetscape of Hobart to me. And there'll be probably other, other ones that come up um, in that block anyway. So to me, I, I move for approval. Thank you, Alderman Briscoe. Further discussion? Oh, sorry, Alderman Barakas. Uh, uh, thank you, Chen. I'd agree with um, what Alderman Briscoe said, um, and I'd be supporting his, his motion. I suppose just two, two things. One is, um, you know, I think it was it was sort of acknowledged that you know, the broader building itself probably fit in quite well with the um, with the skyline with the rest of the city, um, and as, as well as that, I think, and it, it did come up in the uh, applicant's deputation. The nature of the, the building that exists there is, is the history of that building is clearly one that's of con- pretty consistent change. It's one that's changed numerous times over the, over the decades. Um, and I think Alan Briscoe may have made a reference to that point. There's, I think it's different when we're looking at buildings that have stayed pretty much consistent and pretty much untouched for however long and have a pretty clear historical significance. Um, and then there's other buildings that have, like, if, if the, the nature of the building itself is one of, of change and there's the matter of which are the elements that have changed, which are the elements that have stayed reasonably consistent. And I know there's been a lot of talk and a lot of, um, you know, uh, concern about the nature of facadism, but I think when we're looking at a heritage building such as the one we're talking about, it's what aspects of the building, what aspects of the heritage are those that need to be protected and which one, which aspects are those that are significant because the entire building, every single as- aspect or component of that building might not be or isn't signi- like necessarily significant. I think the, the core significant parts of the building itself are being kept and I think especially in, in, in this case, the most important part of this building is the facade, which might not be true in other developments where a, a broader part of the building itself is significant. But I think in the, in this case, it's the, the facade. You know, whilst we, like I said, we do talk about facadism, it is actually a core part, and it might be the core part of this building that is being being kept. And I think if you know, when it comes to the topic of, as Councillor Harvey raised the, the the part the part one, the E thirteen point seven point one, about the you know, the greater environmental, social, economic safety reason greater than the the loss of the heritage. There's there's a lot of arguments that could be made, and this is ultimately one that. Know, noting and respecting the recommendations of the officers, this is one that's ultimately a very, very discretionary um, consideration. Um, as Councillor Harvey said, there's the potential and no, no real sort of, I suppose, arguments being made for or against the the environmental aspect of it. But you know, there there is there is a solid argument. I think that a the that what's being put forward would be more environmentally. Friendly than what, what, what's currently there, but also I think the you know especially in the current economic climate that we have and our need to our need to recover and our need to economically recover, I think just just the um, the inclusion of this building itself would provide much needed economic benefit. So look, I I think ultimately if we can't build something like this in the middle of the CBD, then there's not many places that we would be able to build it. No, I think that this is something that absolutely should be should be approved, and I think that current design does, I think, meet that balance between pr- protecting what is significant about that site and, and, and that contributing more to it, which is, I think, in a sense, what <coughs> the history of this development, the, this building is. It's one that's adapted to the times of the day and adapted to the needs of the day. It started off as one thing and as the, you know, the use of it changed, as the, the you know, 
the um, business itself updated the place was renovated and places chopped and changed to, to meet the requirements of the day and this is what it's doing again now so I think you know whilst this might be an intensification of, of the site it is it is in line with the with the progression and the story of the building so I, I'd, I'd commend the applicants for that and I'd be supporting approval Thank uh, you. Yeah, um, just a condition so I forgot to mention that uh, a couple of conditions should be included if they're not being included yes, Alderman Briscoe, Photo photographic record of the current building um, to the satisfaction of the officers uh, and uh, an appropriate interpretation of the building to the satisfaction of the officers. Um, this report itself is uh, is a good record of the history anyway, but uh, but uh, architectural um, photographs um, and also an interpretation somewhere in the building to the satisfaction of the officers. I'm sure the uh, architects would be able to include that in an appropriate place. Even the foyer, often these days, um, modern hotels include a bit of a photo montage of the former uses of that Further discussion? The site. Thank you. Councillor Harvey, then Councillor Dutta. Uh, thanks, Chair. This, this building's been used by the Coogan's you know, industry or whatever they were, the, the family business or whatever, since, what, 1911. So that's 121 year, 120 years of history with the one company in the building. Um, and I do appreciate what the heritage officer said about uh, the adaptive reuse of a building rather than the complete demolition of a building. And that for me is what signifies a, a really thoughtful developer um, when they say, well, okay, we, we will consider those first two floors that were the Coogan's business. Um, and then we will consider looking at what we can do above those floors and I know it's a challenge but if you look at that you know the, the images the montage of some of the, the fabric of the building the, the the big beams in the basement plus the sandstone walls and I'm, I'm not sure what the first floors are made of but more than likely they're made of significant timber um, um, you know, floorboards and things but to just smash it all down to demolish the whole lot and create something completely new makes it really hard for me to support this tonight. I would like to support it, but I'm not going to support it tonight because I just don't think the developers have done enough to honour what the building was for over 100 years. Um, even though it's changed, things change over time. And Alderman Briscoe talked about how, you know, it doesn't have that same sort of relevance now and we need to reinterpret this, the buildings in the city and reuse the buildings in the city. And a smart city, a smart city will always push for that adaptive reuse rather than the destruction of a complete building. So I won't support it tonight. I also think it sits outside the building envelope and it should conform more with those setbacks. Um, but I would have liked to have thought that this is the first pass for this project and that it could come back with something much more beneficial and significant by respecting that history of the building a bit more thoroughly, by looking at how it could keep that that um, department store kind of feel as part of a feature within their hotels. You know, we've seen other significant buildings beautifully adapted. The university, I think, will be a standout with the way they look after their heritage buildings into the future. But I think more could have been done with this design and this development. So I'll be supporting the heritage officer's recommendation. I'll foreshadow that. the okay, original recommendation. Councillor Data, then Councillor Coates. Uh, th thank you, Chair. Now, I um, read the report and it has uh, <coughs> made the recommendation of refusal based on six reasons. Now, uh, those six reasons for me, uh, quite clearly and categorically, in the majority of those clauses, uh, says that it does not satisfy the acceptable solution and also the performance criteria. In other matters, when they've come to us, there's been one or two grounds of refusal. But for me, this uh, goes beyond just the facade and looks at uh, the other issues of subservience, um, scale, bulk, etc. Now, on those grounds, the six grounds that I've read and the evidence before me and my interpretation of it, I would uh, be supporting the recommendation by the staff. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Coates. Um, look, thank you. Uh, I guess to begin with, um, 
and I think it's been a very good discussion, and it's it's a uh, very good presentation by the applicant and, and by our staff as well. Um, I guess I have one of them. We've heard, obviously, um, if I can sum it up, the crux of the issue seems to be that the amount of demolition that's proposed um, to, to the heritage fabric. And I heard from the applicant that, you know, obviously one of the staircases is going to be retained on the inside. In fact, they are retaining some of the sandstone foundation. I just wanted to get uh, a little bit of clarity around that. I mean, maybe I'm obviously it got, got raised a little bit later, but um, through you, Chair of the Director, w will some of the foundation actually be, um, the existing foundation be, um, be there? And the reason I ask this is because, um, you know, in a lot of these, I, I, I do take a lot of weight from the Urban um, Design Advisory Panel, um, and they've specifically mentioned that the efforts that they've actually gone to, and they've, they've got it here, to contribute to the public's experience by the opening up of views down to the basement to pass us by. So we've got this existing heritage listed building with an original sandstone um, you know, basement to it, and the urban design panel in their report, the second last paragraph, have literally said you know, they, they're, they're highlighting this as a benefit. Um, and so I admit we might lose some of that um, uh, existing basement, but on the, on the same time that the the component that it remains, at least on my reading of it, May. is is um, is being opened up to, to, you know, ultimately more public access and use. So and I guess I'm trying to wave that up. We, we, you know, you lose some of it, but then you gain access to some of it. <laughs> that's, is that a question to Ms Baines to the, or director? Well, through you to, as chair to the director, I'm guessing. But, um, or so, yeah, I mean, I think so, so, I mean, I guess the crux of it is, is they've highlighted that in their report. Is it true that we are retaining some of the internal structures, not just the facade? Yeah, so the, the party walls, if you like, the sandstone party walls in the basement will be, be retained and they're proposed to be showcased, as you have pointed out with your... So that, that's correct. So they're not proposing total demolition, but they are proposing um, demolition of an awful lot you know, a great proportion of the building. So, so what you're saying is, is correct, that, that there will be some, there'll be something there to see, yep. Absolutely. I mean, you know, these, these things are never easy. Um, I, I guess, uh, from my perspective, we're weighing up ultimately, uh, you know, what is an old building and the retention of, of, of a heritage building against, you know, inevitably what will be its modernisation and transformation into its, its new future. And we all know that Coogan's isn't coming back or, or any other department store for that matter, Fitzgerald's or, or what have you. Um, look, I think I'm inclined, um, having listened to the arguments and the, and the views, and you know, it, do, it does weigh on me that the, and as I said, I always give it a lot of weight, the Urban Design Advisory Panel haven't come out against this, um, and they've highlighted their some of the benefits. I mean, I know that um, it's an interesting one, I'm not sure that, um, how much weight it is, but that, you know, it was very interesting to hear, and I took a note of it at the time, they said they considered um, on the site that the public art officers of the, of the city um, said probably best not display on the building in terms of civic amenities and obviously the, the public art contribution uh, across the way I think is definitely a big tick um, you know in regards to this building uh, or sorry this proposal um, you know I do note of course that we haven't received a huge amount of um, representations against this um, I mean I know sheer number alone is Arguably, the cable car shows isn't necessarily um, that, but but you know it, it is. I, I think I'll just note on the fact that um, we haven't received for, for what is a very large development um, a huge amount of public outcry in regards to the heritage grounds of this. So look, I guess I'm sitting here trying to weigh up ultimately retention of heritage versus is this proposal um, sympathetic and add to the economic and environmental and, and cultural fabric. And look, I think that there's clearly some stuff that they've done which is smart. Um, they are keeping one of the original staircases. They are opening up so people can actually see some of the heritage that's down there. Um, and, and, you know, the Urban Design Panel notes about the public art as well, but, and we heard in their comments that they've engaged with officers on that. Um, so, look, I think that ultimately this actually is ticking quite a few boxes, um, and I'm inclined to support uh, the applicant. And, um, and look, you know, uh, for what it's worth, I think it will add to the economic development of the city, and there is. Um, an argument there as well. But, um, but ultimately, I, I see something that, yes, it'll take some heritage away um, that will be lost, but there are definitely trade-offs here. Um, and you're always sort of, you know, it is important that facade remains, 
It is also important that the, the heritage that will remain is then showcased um, to the public, and I can see some stuff in this proposal that I think will actually do that. So I'm comfortable with development. Thank, thanks for your contribution. Um, I just have a, a couple of questions. Uh, the, the stepping back in this, this area, Mr Noy, um, whilst it's only, I think, five metres perhaps from uh, the original building um, front, a street front, what, what is it meant to be um, in, in this vicinity? Well, the uh, acceptable solution, I think, is uh, 15 metres, did I just? 15 metres, so. I'll just, I'll just need to check that. Um, that's my understanding. <coughs> Okay, perhaps I could have some clarity on that. Um, and uh, how, how, what sort of percentage, percentage is therefore outside of the building envelope? Ooh. Because the page 57 uh, of our report suggests, you know, just visually is that there's a significant amount like, goodness knows how much, I don't know, 30 to 40 per cent perhaps yeah. outside of the building envelope? Yeah, I mean, I, I can just have a look. Oh, yeah, pr probably on an area basis, it's probably 25 per cent would be my, um, would be my guess. Um, we could certainly provide that figure for you. Mm, I think that uh, would be useful. As, a, um, uh, as an area, but uh, I, I think it was probably more like 25% as opposed to 40 But it, um, again, um, it, uh, it assessed against the performance criteria, and that's what we've got to do. Satisfies those criteria. And um, uh, I haven't seen any conditions for uh, approval. Um, would it include, uh, like, covering the, the plant, um, I think, which the design advisory panel suggested, and there was a couple of other things that they yeah. suggested as well. Yeah. Have we, we don't have... Um, I can... Uh, we can circulate those. Um, and maybe... Have you, have you got them? Can you put them up on the screen? Yeah, so look, um, we have incorporated um, the requirement uh, as proposed by the Urban Design Advisory Panel that the rooftop plant and infrastructure must be fully enclosed to reduce its overall visibility prior to commencement, so the use of the rooftop plant must be enclosed in a manner which provides overall enclosure to shield the internal plant and infrastructure from view, particularly from more elevated vantage points. <coughs> in relation to um, the, uh, the standards for the building and avoids and, and light getting into those um, inner rooms, I don't know if they're inner rooms, but um, is that covered through the for, for this type of development in relation to the building standards or is that only for residential? It's only for residential. So it doesn't yeah. matter so much for for um, presumably either short-stay short accommodation or... Resi uh, or um, I, don't, I don't believe so. I don't believe so. So the, the become more conditions that I suggested that would be tacked on... Yes, the no, they're in there process. already. Oh, they're the, already? The, the, uh, yeah, we've... Uh, Anticipated. Uh, anticipated. Uh, <laughs> fair enough. About um, the, the interpretation. Interpretation. Yeah, the interpretation and the uh, photographic record. Uh, yes. Now, coming back to your, your um, first question around the setbacks, the amenity building envelope sites 
with southeast facing frontages allows 15 metre height within 15 metres of the frontage and 30 metre height from 15 metres uh, to 30 metre back from the frontage. So yeah, basically you can have um, build to the uh, frontage up to 15 metres, then you set back 15 metres up to 30 metres and then you set back a further 15 metres um, for oh, I see. Yep. Yeah, the next oh, 6.7.5 is the clause um, as referenced within the officer report. Okay. Uh, it's can, I just, been can I just oh, confirm the, um, Harvey. the contribution to the public art? That's locked in as a condition? Yes. Uh, uh, yep. Yep. As a condition? Yes. Well, I just saw it. And, uh, and it is uh, um, uh, part of the proposal. Mm -hmm. And it's a condition precedent. So yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm just making sure it didn't disappear. Yep. <laughs> Thank you. I, I haven't had a chance to, to read through these these conditions, um, and I um, appreciate the the discussion, uh, the presentation, and and uh, the expert advice. Um, at this point, I will support uh, the short short uh, the foreshadowed motion. Um, is there any further discussion about, about the motion? Or I'll put the motion uh, moved by Alderman Briscoe, subject to conditions. Those in favour? Aye. Those against? No. Show of hands. Those in favour? Alderman Briscoe, Alderman Barakas, Councillor Coates. Those against? Councillor Hardy, Councillor Barakas. Like Groundhog Day. Lost. Yeah. We'll have the foreshadowed motion. For the original officer's recommendation. Thank you. For refusal. For refusal. For refusal. Those, Those in favour? Yeah. Aye. Those Aye. against? No. no. Show of hands, those in favour? Councillor Hardy, Councillor Coates, and the Deputy Lord Mayor. Almost predictable, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> so the, the motion is lost. So therefore, it will go to full council next week uh, without a recommendation from committee. Which uh, is fair, I think. So thank you for the discussion. We move back to the... Uh, is that bad or do you think oh, I know that Mr Goodwolf is here uh, in relation to 7.2.2, but so I'll um, ask that we, we hear that first. Which is? Um, uh, 25 World Street. Oh, World Street, yes. Um, can I have that? Somebody move that, please. Thank please. you, Alderman Barakas. Those in favour? Those Aye. against? The items carried. So 7.2.2, 25 World Street. Um, Director, could you just tell us what yep. what's changed? Yes, well, there's uh, a few things changed. Um, the provisions uh, of, uh, have changed uh, as a result of um, state government amending the uh, rear setback provisions. Um, and so the, um, the proposal uh, with some minor tweaks have uh, satisfied the building envelope. And the only discretion attributed to this proposal is one of heritage. And we are of the uh, view that it satisfies those heritage provisions. Right, thank you. Discussion? Alderman Briscoe. Oh, uh, yeah, look, look it's, um, I can understand the um, representations against it. Um, and it's sad that, um, that uh, there wasn't. Um, some changes from the applicant, but uh, as it's now com almost complying, um, I, I think, uh, sadly, I, I look, I'll move for approval, um, knowing that uh, not much we can do. Uh, it's only here because of the representations, I think. Yeah. And would normally, if, we, if it wasn't those representations, we'd be approved over the other side. Thank so you, Alderman Briscoe. It was discretionary, though, wasn't it? So, on, uh, he on heritage. Uh, Chair, Councillor Harvey. Can I just confirm, and maybe you said it and I wasn't paying attention before, but has the project moved further off the boundary? Did I read yeah. that they were demolishing the rear of the, the subject building, the yoga studio, and they were moving it one to 1 1.5 metres from that boundary? Or is that from the neighbour's boundary, not the rear boundary? Well, the neighbour's breach, my understanding is that there's no change um, on the boundary where the residential is where the concern. Okay, okay. so I thought it, it shifted from the neighbour's boundary, not the rear boundary. 
so that had no no bearing on anyway i've only had the chance to read it once so alderman Barakas. um thank you chair look i know that this was deferred um when this came before us last time i was largely supportive of the um of the application at the time and i think if things have changed the circumstances have changed now to make this even more compliant than it was before then i think it's a pretty um I think it's a pretty simple consideration tonight, so I'm happy to... Well, the rules it. changed rather than the design changed. Well, it says change circumstances rather than change the design. So. Thank you. Any further discussion? Councillor Hardy. Just to clarify, if this was rejected, we'd have very little chance of defending it because it complies now with the new regular new planning scheme amendments. That's Mr. correct. Right. That, that's correct, and we couldn't. Uh, the officers are of a strong view that you couldn't defend a refusal under the uh, only discretion related to her. All right. Well, I'll be voting in favour of it tonight. Thank you. Look, I um, I appreciate that uh, Mr. Goodwolf um, did um, defer uh, defer this for discussion with I think with with neighbours and to try and get a a better outcome. Um, I find it very difficult, uh, given given the impact um, on the neighbours um, and just the juxtaposition of, of those those houses, much lower, um, uh, effectively than than this this um, application will be, um, having been to those those um, properties uh, adjacent, which will be really impacted by by any any development on that boundary, I, as far as I see, I find it very difficult to to support the application, um, even <laughs> even against the uh, partly because of the the allowances with this uh, change with is it PD four with right. the setback. Yeah, yep. I just find it very difficult to support. Mm. So um, anyway, any further discussion, Councillor Coates. Um, look, I mean, other than to note natural justice, I guess if, if, if the rules have changed, the rules have changed for everyone, not just this one application. And um, look, you know, uh, I, I think it is worth noting that, that the applicant at the time wasn't trying to barge their way through and, and get their way necessarily. They were, they were happy to defer this to try and, and, um, and mediate and talk with the neighbours. So I think that's a plus. But, you know, ultimately we're here... Uh, to implement a planning scheme as it is, um, and also I guess you've always got that, that hat on of rate pay money, and you know to, to reject it and put at risk um, at, at the effort and time and resources of the council for a case where we've got the advice, firm advice that, that we would struggle to defend this. I mean, I I think um, our option's pretty clear. Councillor Coates, thank you very much for that um, that uh, position. Um, everybody else has a, a right to have their own position. Um, That's what they don't, do. Yeah. don't really need to be lectured to, but thank you very much. So I'll put the motion as moved by Alderman Briscoe. Those in favour? Aye. Those against? No. Show of hands, those in favour? Those against? Uh, motion is carried. Uh, and does that, does that uh, go to full council? No, I don't believe so. Oh, there were four representations, so yeah. no. So that, that decision, that has been passed. Um, we go now to item 7.2 oh, sorry, 7.1.1, which is 18 Brook Street Hobart. It's uh, outdoor furniture. Can I have somebody uh, move this? Councillor Data? All well, three just went for it. Any um, discussion in relation to this? Only, Lord um, Deputy Mayor, <laughs> Deputy Lord Mayor. But I, this seems like a, a quite an attractive addition to the street, um, so I don't have any issues with it. And I remember a number of years ago we argued furiously to try and get some of these things into the street as well. So it's good to see that they're happening. Can I just, I just ask, this is at the cost of the proponent? Most definitely. Yep. So there's occupation There'll fees. be an occupation fees associated mm -hmm. with it, and clearly it'll be their, um, their cost to construct the steel frame and timber structure. Yep, thank you. 
And just in relation to like access, so the the it'll be away from the wall, and there'll be how is there two meters or something between? Uh, the yeah, say, didn't it? Yeah, so two point. So it'd be set back three metres from the facade. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah. So, so that's, that's plenty of yep. area through there. Yep. Okay. So Councillor Dutt has moved that. Any further discussion? If not, I'll put that. Those in favour? Aye. Those against? Item is carried. Item 8, 8.1 is a city planning report, advertising report. Any lady, is there anything to of note there? Uh, there is a proposal for upgrade to Long Beach Cafe to the council because that's council land and one other um, matter which will come to the committee which is on uh, works and road reservation other than that so the long beach cafe is that the the um vault building yeah, no, yeah. It's, it Dirk is vault building mm. all right can i have somebody receive and note that of okay alderman Barakas, thank you any further questions I'll put the motion. Those in favour? Aye. Those against? Items carried. 8.2 is delegated decision report. Can I have somebody Please. receive and note this? Thank you, Councillor Harvey. Those in favour? Aye. Those against? Item is carried. Item 9 is questions without notice. Any? Yeah, Alderman Briscoe. Um, in view of the special meeting for the uh, Mount Wellington Cable Car Company proposal for the mountain, what what is the procedure of that night? Is it going to be a planning meeting first, followed by a council meeting, and will representations be heard or deputations be heard that evening? And if so, will uh, uh, will that be enough time? Uh, and probably, I note the Lord Mayor is meeting or has offered to meet individually representors and I personally think that is a, a poor move. I think we should meet as a council with the representations and deputations. But um, what is the plan for that special meeting in July? Director. Yeah, uh, the, the, the plans uh, for that meeting will be subject of uh, further advice in due course. Um, so we'll be providing uh, a memo to elected members of that, that arrangement. Can you confirm or deny that we'll allow deputations? My understanding is deputations will be allowed for and it will be one meeting, not a committee meeting. So it won't be, we won't have an opportunity to consider the representations before we vote as the whole council? No. Um, I think that, no, uh, there will be deputations at that council meeting. The representations, if I might add. Oh, sorry, the deputations. So, yes. the deput so we normally, uh, I mean, the advantage of a planning meeting is that we have time between a planning meeting and the full council, mm. but we won't have it. It would just be a council meeting, right? Yes, uh, but that um, the, the final details will be subject to um, a memo shortly, as I understand, those arrangements. So, uh, can you confirm or deny that we won't have any say in that? Um, uh, I, I, well, it'll be a matter for the chair, I suspect, um, and the general man, uh, and the CEO. Can that um, memo be um, circulated as soon as possible, please, Mr. Noy? I'm hearing, um, yes, <laughs> I'm hearing the I'm mood, hearing. I'm hearing the the mood of the committee. Thank you. My, my answer to my question is it's taken on notice, and a memo that, will That's be correct. Except for those couple of things I managed to get out of you, but yep. uh, yeah, good. That, that's correct, Councillor Dutta. Um, uh, just following up from that, um, re with regards to the speaking time allocation, if it's going to be council, we'll be we'll be only given five minutes. Like in the committee, you know, you are able to fact finding, uh, speak a few more times. But if it is simply five minutes at the council, then we're restricted. Good point. Is that? Mr. Mm. Um, well. Uh, I understand uh, standing orders can be relaxed um, and that will be, uh, uh, I'm sure will be covered in the um, memo that will be circulated uh, <laughs> shortly. Just a couple of questions then. So the decision, you know, it shouldn't be 
you know, of the council as to how we want this formatted or get in position on us to say this is what you should do. Again, I'll, I'll um, uh, take that question on notice. Okay. Oh, you didn't take it on notice. <coughs> you said a different answer to that. You said it will be a decision of the chair and the CEO. So you've changed your mind. It will take it on notice now. Well, no, well, sorry, sorry about I, being I, I thought that that was a slightly different question. Oh, it was the same question. Uh, it said a different thank way. you. Thank you. There's no debate about the no, questions. No, no. But I, I'm, I'm just clarifying the answer to my question. My, my uh, uh, question was that we, we have no say as, a, as a, a, a council or committee about how that meeting is conducted and you said no, the CEO and the chair will, and the same question was asked just a moment ago and you had a different answer. Yeah, thank you. Mr Noy? No, my, well, I, I'd like to clarify that response. Yeah, thank you. I'd like to clarify that response um, uh, uh, through a... Um, a, a much more formal response and in consultation with the uh, CEO. Thank you very much. Any further questions without notice? I have a, a question. Um, given the re recent revelations of uninhabitable homes in Glenorchy's McGill Rise subdivision, could the director please provide information as to whether in the past 12 months there have been breaches in building compliance, apart from obviously 55 Mount Stewart Road, um, by building service providers in the Hobart municipality and are there any builders or surveyor, surveyors being investigated for any approved developments in the Hobart municipality? I'll take that on notice. Thank Chair. you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. It's a very specific question. No further questions? I'll um, move that we... Oh, I'll ask that we that we close the open, open the closed. Yeah, item 10. Thank you, Alderman Barakas. Those in favour? Right. Those against? Items carried. And uh, this concludes the...